Welcome to uh, the 1PMCET one, one uh, session here. And um, Shaq, I don't know if you know that, but I think that Kelvin is uh, is going to show us how to be disruptive in this industry. At least that's what he promised in his uh, in his uh, pre description of the event. Isn't that correct, uh, Kelvin? I'm going to give it a good try. Yeah. <laughs> so a uh, warm welcome to you, Kelvin. And um, uh, I can't help think about because you know how many times during the past year have congratulated you on the crown uh, crown pop. Uh, I think uh, I think that you have already disrupted how to communicate with the industry in a very very unbiased, though still I think also from a commercial perspective valuable uh, uh, kind of approach. I mean the openness that I have always uh, learned from 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 you um, is that something that you feel is transparent in all the way how you develop software, how you communicate with people, and how you see see yourself as a player in the industry. Without a doubt, yeah. I think um, the, the reason why we started the Crown Pub Initiative was because we wanted to bring people together. We, I, I love the print industry. It's right through me. So I'm quite passionate about what I do. I'm passionate about the people I work with, you know, and, and you know, there's just been some great uh, exhibitors on this event. And you can see how, how high the demand, you know, the expectation is for work to print. And, you know, being transparent is, is, is the way to show it, to, to show how good you are and how it comes across. I have also noticed that you have been participating uh, at uh, quite some sessions this uh, these few days here. Um, I also think that one thing is the transparency that you just spoke about, but I think you're also very competitive, right? Oh, yeah. And, uh, I think I don't know if it goes back to my military days or when I played. Oh, yeah. But, um, <laughs> I, yeah, I'm very, very competitive. I have to say the standard has been awesome. On the first day, I pretty much threw my presentation out the window. Uh, <laughs> after Dougie and Figo, he just took it right up another level. So oh, I yeah. to, to those guys for, for, yeah. for changing the set. And even last night I was changing my presentation. I just oh, really? Wow. Well, uh, well uh, uh, I think I can call you Kath. It's the first time that we actually meet, uh, right? Or yeah. virtually anyway, so... I see a lot of them uh, addressing you as 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 Kelv or, or yeah. whatever, and uh, I even see that, that there's somebody who got up very early just uh, to to witness this. So uh, it's <laughs> cool. So um, Kelvin, um, uh, the web to print market you have uh, you have been in been in in the, this market for for some time here. Uh, is it wrong to say that in the beginning? Uh, and I don't know when that beginning exactly was because you both of us saw uh, Slava yesterday and he was like one of the, like 22 years ago, he came with the first solution. And I think that, it, I mean, he described a solution that was really developed because of a specific need uh, he had from some customers. And I think that everything we do is, of course, developed on needs from customers. But has the the, the web to print business moved from being like a niche product to be a have you you must have product yeah well yeah i mean i could break that down a couple of bits so v press was 20 years old in february which isn't isn't a long time for some print companies but in technology it's like a thousand years old it's, it's crazy um but we were doing web to print before that for a few years uh for a big uh, print organization uh before v press and back then it was business cards and stock ordering it was simple it was dial up internet you know it was it was you know, you speak to young people now and they just don't understand how the internet was then. It wasn't on demand as it is. But now what's happened is uh, there's been a change that's slowly happening. And it's, it's, it's embedded within digital, the evolution of digital, the, the internet. Uh, and web to print is, is an intricate part of that. And what's happened now with, with the, the pandemic over the last 12 months, we're engaging with people completely different. You know, the, the Crown Pub would never have existed if it wasn't for the pandemic that we've had. I now know... I think five, six hundred people, more people through the Crown Pub because of networking has changed the way that we I've engaged with you more than ever, Morton. You know, um, we didn't know each other before, right? We, we didn't. I, I knew of you because you're famous, but no one knew of me. But the um, people now are engaging differently. And this isn't just something that's going to go back to normal. This is the new normal. Things mm -hmm. are changing. You've got mm -hmm. to get online. And mm -hmm. this is one of the reasons why we've been so busy. But saying that, uh, doesn't that also require. Um, entirely new thinking of web to print. I mean, I, you know, the way I, I'm the reason I'm asking, I know that you can have a chat function in your web to print solution or yeah, as a third party, but uh, maybe the, the, the next 
generation web to print is something where you have a platform where you collaborate about print and you collaborate about design and then oh you click print button and then you get the printed i mean it could change the entire scene of of how uh because the pandemic has shown us new ways of engaging with each other right i think it has changed uh, for us we've i'm going to show you some functionality today that we've developed because of the pandemic oh okay. you know, where we've changed it and not only have we changed the way it's working You've got to understand people are now are using mobile. You know, I'm working from home today, West London, sun shining. But you know, a lot of the e-commerce that I engage with is on my mobile device. Look did you say it. did you say South France with the wine on the table or did you say No, no West uh, West London? It, it was just because there was sunshine, so I didn't think that was the UK. I know we've got everything, sunshine, vaccine, a lot. Um <laughs> <laughs> that in Europe. <laughs> sorry. Um, but you know, the you know the way we have to print is now we're engaging a lot more you know and at 12 months ago we all we all looked at things in a negative shocking way because this was new to us but look at the people who stood strong and, and evolved from that amazon you know i know amazon gets a lot of mention but it took on a hundred thousand people at the start of the pandemic mm. you know we're now engaging i i never used to engage using my mobile phone to buy stuff off the internet from my, and, and have it delivered next day and and mm. You know, I've changed the way that I work, so mm. it makes sense that people buying print are going to change the way that they work. Mm. So, uh, one thing is that you're going to show us something that is you know, developed uh, because of the pandemic or inspired by the pandemic. Um, before we go into the demo, um, do you have a short? Uh, it doesn't have to be very short, but an opinion about where you see the uh, the market developing for for the printing industry in relation to web to print within, let's say, the next couple of years despite that we hopefully are with, uh, out of the pandemic before then? Yeah, I, I, I think print is evolving. The whole industry is evolving. And what we've got to look at, we've got to look at what buyers want. And there's two things that really what buyers want in anything. And that they want to buy it now at their convenience, not our convenience. So if you open up your print shop at 8 a.m. and you go home at 6 a.m., you're missing out on half the market straight away. So it's, it's been having a solution that's on demand. If web to print is your storefront. And the second thing is they want a price. They want to know how much it is because I can I can invite you guys to a party here in West London. I can fly you over. I can put you in a hotel. I can buy you a nice meal and we can go out and see a show. I can get a price for all of those variables, right? Quite happy to as well. Uh, I can get a price for all of those variables. I can get it on my mobile phone and I can pay for it right now. But a lot of printers have got to look at what they're selling. How much is a piece of print? Well, I don't know. You know, we'll have to wait till the estimate is in <laughs> on Tuesday because he's catching up on his holiday. You've got to change that the way we engage with our customers. It's paramount. And web print allows us to do that. That's the change. But that that pricing scheme, I can't help thinking about it because I like it and I hate it at the same time. Because it also to me uh, and that is something that I am very concerned about actually, is uh, value over price. I, I do understand that we need fast things, but on the other hand, I also think that sometimes, you know, this instant pricing can always give you a race to the button. Basically, you often end up in situations where you may think that price is the most important thing. Yeah, but I mean, look at, okay, so I'm, I'm going back on Amazon, apologies for that, but I can go and buy something from, from Screwfix, a DIY store down the road for 20% cheaper, but Amazon will deliver to my door and receive my order mm. when I want to place that order mm. and I know how much I'm paying. So intrinsically, I'm putting a value on my time of yeah. going to my next town and doing something. And it's about the convenience. If you want the cheapest, that is a race to the bottom. You know, yeah. one thing about print industry, 20, 20 odd years I've been in print, uh, is you can always get cheaper. Mm. Always. Yeah. So don't go for cheapest. But please send me the addresses then because I need something. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, Kelvin, um, why don't we dig into the presentation and uh, then we have Q&As afterwards? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Look forward. So what I'm going to do is just share my screen now. Uh, can I just confirm you can see that? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, you can see it, yeah. Okay. So start at the beginning. So web to print there's really two flavors of web to print and again, the standard has been so high with the other providers, uh, I've decided to do something different. Um, and I'm going to tackle both those markets, uh, B2B, B2C, and then all of that into a mobile environment. So first thing we've got here is a login page. How do we get to the login page? 
Well, we have um, we, we support things like SSO, uh, single sign-on. We integrate into ERP CRM systems, which is one of the biggest opportunity in, in B2B at the moment. Large companies are using purchasing systems, their own version of Amazon. So why wouldn't you integrate them? And, you know, it's a, there's a huge advantage of doing so. We can brand up these portals very quickly. You don't have to have a login page and it can be accessed from anywhere on any device with no software loaded. That is a key thing. We don't work in a market anymore where you download software in order to facilitate your transaction. Think of what Amazon and eBay and Etsy and those large providers are doing for general goods in the market. And that is what we have to emulate with web to print And that is what we do emulate here with B-Press. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to log into eStorefront. So I've got a username and password. I'm going to come into a storefront. And one of the key things is I've mentioned the word convenience already. But how long does it take to create a storefront? Now, there is a little bit of smoke and mirrors here. One of the guys in the office have set up a few products here. But this is a, a browser-based, secure, uh, which you can see by the little uh, padlock there. I'm not running on a local server on my machine here, uh, which, which can be done. What I'm doing is I'm actually accessing this through the internet. So how, do I, how long does it take to brand up uh, an actual portal uh, within the software? So what I'm going to do here, the structure of the site can change. We have an API, so we can completely offer something completely different. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to brand up a storefront just in a, in a minute or so. So I'm going to come through to this option here. I'm going to go into themes. And it's going to open up a control panel. So straight away, you'll see I don't have to be a software developer in order to create a, a storefront. And the really simple thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the hex color here, which I could do a color match if I wanted to. But I've got a particular color in mind for this demonstration, and it's going to be uh, BT6, B3, B3. And the first thing you notice is I can't talk and type at the same time. It's a limitation. So I'm going to swap that color there with the same color. That's all I'm doing. I'm just going through here and changing some of the options. Uh, I'm going to tick these options here. And that option there. I'm going to go into this option here. And again, wherever I see that color, I'm just going to mend that color as I go through, skip down to the bottom, and then finally on backgrounds. I'm again going to just check that I've got everything selected because it's a, it's a live demo and there's a good chance I could get something wrong. And I'm going to select a, a background, has a background. And then what I'm going to do is go down to the bottom and I'm going to save those changes. Really simple, straightforward things that I've just done there. And what's happened is you've seen that I've changed the, the, the color to that hex color I've just entered. I'm going to click on home page. I brought in a graphic. And what I've done is I've just branded a storefront. Like I said, there's, these folders were already set up in advance and the products were already set up in advance. But I'm going to cover that off as well as I, as I go through. So I want to create a branded storefront for Inkish. So while I've been talking, I've just done that by selecting some options. And you see I've got an animated graphic. Everything is variable here. We can change this. It will work in 24, 25 languages uh, that we've got on the system. We can have more languages, any currency, and it will work on any device, including mobile. So it's a powerful tool straight away that you can see. So the navigation of the site, as we scroll through, you can see I can add uh, and remove options here on the left. So we've got uh, all the options I'm showing today are listed there, but we've got more functionality uh, within the application. And what I can do, I can manage things like my spend, my profile, my themes, and uh, and my downloads, all within within the actual portal. And like I said, I've, I've branded that up. So, so I've branded up the portal. What am I going to use it for? I'm going to use it to order products. And the first product I'm going to uh, place an order for is is marketing. It's it's what we know as web to print. Now, I'm specifically not going to show a business card. Uh, uh, I've done that for many many years, and and I'm not sure that business cards are going to live after the the current pandemic, but I'm quite happy if anybody specifically wants to see a business card, I'll quite happy address that on a separate presentation. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is, is something a little bit more topical, and I'm going to click on this vaccine poster. And again, this can all look very different. I'm just showing you one example going through. So as I come through here, I've got a product there. I can order, I could delete the selected, but what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to create a new product. So the template has been loaded within the actual application. So one thing I should point out now, everything within this system has been developed by VPress. The way we build and manage templates, uh, our core create system, comes within the package. The software that manages everything here. We do link to third parties, 
uh, via CXML or uh, an API. But everything here is, is homegrown uh, over the last 20 years of experience. So we're not using someone else's document composition engine. Uh, this is indeed our own. That is a powerful statement in itself. So I'm clicking onto the actual template. And this is a dynamic editor. So one of the things that's very different about our dynamic editor to others in the market, especially in the B2C market, is we can manage the restrictions and the confinement of a brand. We can lock that brand down. So when I go onto the template, I can only have certain items that I can personalize in certain areas. What I'm going to do here, though, I'm going to click on the text there and I'm going to click where I want to type. And I'm just going to put Molten. Have you still not had your flu jab? So I've got some text there and you can see I can also amend the color of that text uh, following the actual rules and guidelines of the brand. As I type into that box, it will automatically resize the text uh, in order to fit. There's lots of complex rules that are behind the scenes. But what we've done is we've tried to make this convenient for the user and easy, intuitive, uh, so they can place the orders simply themselves. As I come down here, I want to change that age range. So I think we're, we're vaccinating people in the UK 45 now, so I can amend that. As I'm scrolling down, I can edit the text. If I want to change the actual background of that uh, image, I can click on this option and I can have a color palette. You know, what we're not doing here, we're not creating uh, Adobe InDesign or Quark or Illustrator. What we're doing here, the template and, the, and what you can do with that template has been created within the software. And we're just amending the levels of personalization that we've got. So then we come on to the asset here. So the asset, the image, what we've done within Corporate is we've built a digital asset manager and it comes free. We, we give a free DAM, an image or document repository comes as part of the actual software. And what that means is it means you can pre-flight and uh, maintain DPI and aspect ratio on images that are coming into the actual document. And once they're in the document, I can also uh, manage opacity. So I can scroll that image down and I can scroll that image, uh, image up. But what I want to do is I want to change that image. So I've now got an option to select a new uh, image and replace it. This here is quite a relatively straightforward and simple uh, uh, document, but it's taken me into the dam that the client uh, has full ability to manage. And, and our customer, the printer or the print manager or the office products company, they have the ability to set these up for their customers. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click into this option here for healthcare images. And you'll see I've got a range of different doctors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, click on Nurse Shepherd. I'm looking at Nurse Shepherd. The image is on a transparency. I can crop that image further. The system will maintain the aspect ratio and the DPI, as I mentioned. I've got the attributes here. But all I'm going to do for the purpose of a, of a demo, I'm, I'm trying to cover a lot here uh, uh, within the 30 minutes. I can amend the opacity so I can make that a little bit bolder uh, and I can just drag that over a little bit there. So I can just change that. So let me just bring that over a little bit further. Uh, and you can see there. So I've amended that template. I'm still not happy with the red background. All I've got to do is click on anywhere where there is the red background and I can come here and I can take it back to green. So this is a very simple uh, template. And yesterday on LinkedIn, I posted how I created a 16 page A5 landscape brochure and personalized that from a VPress branding to an English branding as well, just to add some further context in there. What I can do here as well, I've got some tools here. I can look at a PDF. The PDF is generated on the fly with the browser using our own software. Uh, that's available at any time. I can undo, redo, um, I can reposition, and I can zoom in and out of that actual product. So there's lots of functionality. I'm just showing you the, the simple elements. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to come out of that, and I'm just going to go back to the home page, and I'm going to look at another kind of product. So I'm going to move up in complexity. So I'm going to go back into marketing items where you can see I've got a range of other products. And within there, I've got something listed here called a HubSpot Intelligent Data Postcard. It's a, it's a direct mail campaign that's going out. So I'm opening up that product uh, within my browser. And you can see it's, it's, I've got different options here. So the first thing I can do is I can change uh, a, a different way of managing the color palette on the mobile phone here. And what I can do is I can select a different date I want that to run from and to. So let's, let's start something first of May, hopefully when British summertime starts. So I'm selecting the, the confines of my campaign. And within here, I can change the view. I can look at the PDF. I can refresh. But I can also scroll through to the next page. And when I scroll through to the next page, what it's got here is it's telling me that it, it's a data-driven product. So all I've got to do is click Continue. 
and the system is going to ask where that data is coming from. Now, VDP is, is a huge subject um, and it has so many different ways of working. We can link this template to not only a, a HubSpot database, a Salesforce database, uh, an Experian database, if you want to purchase data. But for the purpose of this uh, demonstration, what I've got is I've got an Excel spreadsheet because it's in a short space of time and I'm going to bring that into my uh, document. So what I've got here, I've got a thousand lines of Excel spreadsheet. I'm going to click on that uh, and I'm going to upload. So all I've done is I've taken an Excel spreadsheet from my desktop, attached it to that product. I just had a quick look through and it's now creating the, the print files in the cloud. So it's just created a thousand uh, files. I can remap the spreadsheet should I need to do that again. Well, what I can do is I can go through and I can check my one in 10, one in 20. So I've got a thousand there, a thousand. I think each one of these is 1.3 meg, but they're all cleverly produced and uh, cleverly put through into the workflow. So we've got lots of uh, time saving and internet saving efficiency uh, methodology behind the system. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at a couple of these just to show you. The first one you can see, I've got a uh, first name, John, uh, and, and he's looking for a download. Uh, that's the topic of his campaign. So this is information that's come from HubSpot. I'm opening up the PDF on the fly. And the first thing you'll see, the printers that are there, they're going to say, well, hang on, there's no bleed or trim in the uh, on the job. That is applied. That is a variable in itself because we can put uh, job referencing data in that bleed and trim. We can all even put 2D bold barcodes for inline finishing uh, should it be needed. So, it, you know, it, it's all about the setting up of the actual job. So I'm looking here. I can see it's a two-pager. Uh, the message is coming from the spreadsheet, which is coming from uh, HubSpot. I can see download the app personalized message on there. And as I scroll through to the reverse, uh, it's created for John Wilson. The proof symbol there is also a variable as well. What you don't want people doing is downloading the jobs and then printing them on an MFP in their home office and having a really poorly branded product and it not going to commercial print. Just going to go back there again. And what I'm going to do, I can see Sarah is looking for friends and she wants a scan option. So I'm clicking on that. Not quite sure what the scan option is. So as I open up the PDF, the PDF will actually tell me. And the first thing you see there, there's a different color branding. All of this is information from the spreadsheet. And here within the postcard is a QR code that you can scan and get more details. And again, as we scroll through, it's personalized for Sarah with her address details. So you can see that Excel will drive, the data will drive the composition of the actual print job. So again, We've got a thousand items here. There doesn't have to be. There could be 10,000. There could be 100,000. You know, it's all done in the cloud. That is the beauty of the cloud. And what VPress has done on the back end of that is we've created very efficient ways of getting that into any workflow. Whether you've got workflow, whether you've got MIS, whether you have nothing, we have a tool that comes a standard in order to manage that, which you'll see that in a second. So moving on, I'm just going to go back to the main page. And what I'm going to do, I mentioned that we've created some, uh, we've adapted the software for the last 12 months of the pandemic. And on our website, you'll see there's a couple of case studies that are very worth looking at. We've actually got customers who did zero print orders um, before the pandemic and are now doing tens of thousands of jobs a month. And we are very happy to be supporting those guys, as you can imagine. Uh, and in that tool itself, actually, has been job submission. So bear with me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on job submission and I'm going to open that up. And you can see I've got a range of options there. And these are print my file. So what we've done is we've created a tool that will capture a job from, from, from anywhere. So if you think of the, the, the market that we've been in, a lot of printers uh, shut up, shut their doors uh, last year as we went into the, the, the pandemic. But some printers opened up and came to us and said, look, we want a way to, to capture all of these customers' print jobs. So uh, the sales side of me has to mention that, you know, it's never been easy to get in touch with customers now because they're all in one place instead of being transient. So all of those customers still need print. So how do you get the print into the production workflow? So what we've done, one of the options that we've done is we've created this uh, print my file. So I'm going in here and this is our job submission tool. So it supports any different currency. And you can see here the call to action here is upload your file, select a stock, finishing options, and we will print and dispatch within 24 hours. Now we can configure this around what you need or what your customers need. This is just an example. So first thing is, what, what, what is it I need doing? So what I'm gonna do from another screen here, I'm just gonna drag in a few files. 
and drop a few PDFs on there. And we're going to check those PDFs. And the system is now working on that as I'm talking. Bear in mind, I'm sharing my screen, I'm sharing my video, and I'm doing this all the internet, and it's creating this as a job. So it all has to be very efficient, and I go back to that convenience. What it's done is they worked out the three attachments. There's 14 black, uh, black pages, uh, and there's 10 color pages. And it's worked out a price based upon the metrics that I'm going to take you through. But what I'm going to do is I just want to have a look at those attachments. So now they're uploaded into the cloud. And again, all of this is 100% live. I'm just going to scroll down, and each one of those documents you can then see uh, patient choice leaflet, patient choice leaflet, the second part, and then you can see the black and white pages that have been brought in. So all three parts have been identified within the system. They've been read by the system. Now what I'm gonna do is select my paper options. There's a default gone in, so the unit cost for that one single job is £1.22. And I should point out, these are not real print prices, obviously. So what I'm going to do, this is for Morton. So I'm going to give Morton some premium stock here. I want to go to 250 gram. Unit cost is £1.20. It's affecting that job. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to put some uh, heavy cover stock on there, which again is building up the, the actual price of the job. It's now £5.99. I'm going to come down to finishing. I'm going to have some binding. Let's go for perfect bound. Let's have some, uh, let's have that on the right hand side. So it's a bit different. Uh, and let's have single wall uh, packing. I'm increasing the price by changing the variables around that job dynamically. So I come down here, I can order a maximum of 5,000. I'm gonna order 500 for Morton. And what it's done, it's just worked out the price and it's just worked out the, the run on. Now this run on can be uh, incremental, uh, you know, so you can have a discount based upon volume per setup. But, you know, it may be that I've got a budget there of 3,000 euros or 3,000 dollars or 3,000 pounds. And I want to get as much bang for my buck, uh, as they say. So I can go back up the top and I can adjust this job. So on selecting my paper, actually standard was OK. And I'm going to go for standard uh, stock. And let's just go for heavy. And let's just go for wire bound. And... Let's just go for posting envelope. So what I've done is I've just changed the variables there and I've brought the price down for 500 to 1,000 and for 1,000 to just over 2,000. So what I can do is I can select and order that now. So I'm fine tuning the price I'm prepared to pay or what my budget will allow me. Now to put this into context, imagine your customer is uh, in the evening is submitting a job through to you and wants a price for that job. He's not driving on price. Convenience is more of a driver. He's doing it when he wants to do it, and he wants to know there's going to come in, in within his budget of what he wants to spend. And we know how much we want to spend, and we know what is a fair price when we're looking at it. And actually, price isn't the driver here. He's just trying to get good value based upon uh, placing the order. I can place that order, and within seconds, that can be waiting in your print queue. You may not get into the print shop until tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, but that job will be ready and optimized for you, and you know that you can put it on press as you need to. So hopefully that explains that. So I'm just going back to the home page, very conscious of time, and I'm trying to fit an awful lot in here. So another aspect of um, web to print is RFQ, request for quote. So I'm going to go into the request for quote option. Now, again, there's a huge number of possibilities here. And what VPress has the, the option to do, we can manage the price within core print, which is what I've been doing up until now. So as I'm looking for a price for a job, the variables can be within the actual system and they can be managed. What they can also be done is they can be managed within your MIS uh, or your CRM or your ERP system. So what I'm doing here is I've gone into my bespoke request for quote. So we integrate into a multitude of MIS systems, you know, Fastens, uh, Print IQ, uh, Avanti Slingshot. There's a range of systems that are out there. And we're always open to linking to more uh, uh, MIS systems within the market. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put a file in. So I'm gonna drop in some PDFs. I'm pulling the files on there, and I'm going to call this the RFQ 001A. When do I want to price by? Well, I want to price by, it's the 22nd. I actually want it by tomorrow. And what are the specifications around this job? Well, the flyers, actually, I want these as booklets. I want them on quality uh, paper, 170 GSM, and I want them A5 size. These elements here are a variable. You can configure these variables. If I wanted to put bespoke sizing in there, if I wanted to put uh, eyelets because it's a large format job, all of this can be managed within the actual software. As I scroll down here, what quantity do I want? I want 500. 
Actually, I want a price for 1200 uh, I want a price for 2400 And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to submit that for quote. Now, lots of different things can happen. Corporate has the ability to manage that within the actual software itself. So it will send um, uh, it'll send Morton a message to say that Kelvin has just uh, created a quotation. He needs a price for it. And Morton can respond to that. He can log in onto his mobile phone and review that. Uh, I could duplicate that quote. I could share that quote out with other colleagues that I work with. But for the purpose of the demonstration, I'm just going to close that. And I'm just going to look. And you can see it's waiting status. With some of the MIS systems that we link into, everything, all the information the estimator needs will be there so he can create uh, a quotation uh, as required. And again, this is just a, a really basic, simplistic one, but hopefully it gives you a bit of context around web to print So web to print isn't just about business cards. It's not just about marketing items. It's about getting any kind of job from any customer in any environment into any kind of workflow. And it's about doing that efficient, efficiently promoting the order flow for the customer, but enhancing the workflow for production. So something that's quite often overlooked is stock. Now, management of stock, it's easy to order things in bulk, to manage items in bulk. So what I can do is I can order a number of items. So within our software, I can change my view. I can make it very Amazon, eBay-esque, uh, if you wish. Um, but here I've got the grid view. And what I can do, I can make items favorites, but I'm just going to order some products. I'm just going to add some items here. And I'm picking and packing the items, and I'm just going to review them. Each one of these products could be on a shelf, and there could be different rules uh, uh, around each of those products that need to be managed within the procurement lifecycle. So I'm coming in here. So I've got the world's most expensive letterheads, £99.99 .99 per box. So I can see I've got 4,988 in stock in a warehouse in Antwerp. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to order five boxes. And because I'm in the UK, it defaults to pound sterling. It gives me a price. Here I've just got some generic pads. I'm going to order five of those. It gives me a price. And here I could have a drop down. I've got 537 stock. I'm just going to order three. So we can manage not only the volumes that people see, either from a text entry to a drop down. What we can also manage, we can manage what people can order on an allocation. So I'm a manager. I could order five items a month. Morton's a director, he could order a thousand items a month and it works in a number of different ways. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna add those items to basket because within the, the ordering element within corporate, there's a, there's a whole another uh, feature-rich set of, of functionality. So I've got a range of items that are sitting in my basket. So if I just proceed to check out all standard terminology, we can configure the order, all the information you need to be paid, we can capture within the portal, all very easy. So maybe this is PO-123. Uh, maybe we need a list of purchase orders or cost centers. All this can be configured very, very easy. Drop in the contact details. We can capture this from SSO. Manage an address. We can add new address. Maybe we need to put some shipping information in there. Maybe I need to just put a little note on there. Please print now and deliver yesterday. We know how customers are. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to check those items out. Now, they're just stock items. You know, we could have a, a range of different items. What I'm really keen to show you is I get a receipt here. A lot of web to print systems do this. This is emailed to me. We can do the authorization approval process. It goes to my boss. He signs it off. He's happy. It rejects it because I could have spelt my name wrong, which could easily happen with me. Um, lots of different things could be managed. Where we go a little bit further is in reports. Now, management information, reporting is key. Within the software, you can create and build your own reports. And this is a really powerful tool because what you can do, I can select a chronological date. I can run my report from and to within here. Now, information really is key. I can run for uh, search words here. I can pick a, a title within there. I can set the criteria. And all that can be exported into Excel. But when I look at the order lines of the three items that I've just placed, you will see I get granular tracking of each item. So to put this into context, each one of these items could be going to a different printer. One could be going to my digital workflow. One could be going to my offset. But one could be going to a large format in another city, in another country. But I can still manage it within this portal. So the status is new. It hasn't been received yet. Each one has a granular tracking reference number, that order line there, and I can check when he goes in and he picks it up, or I can integrate that into his workflow. And it means that today's printer can print for everything in Holland, all his customers in Holland, but he can also manage the jobs of his customers who are working in the UK or working in France or working in the US. You can manage that. So today's printer is also a print manager himself. 
I think that's a really important message because quite often printers now are confined with only the work that's on their doorstep and not thinking actually we could be managing this work on a wider scale, but that's a whole different presentation. You'll see here, I've got some blank space. So if we've integrated a live site into shipping, I've just created this portal while you've been watching. If we integrate it into uh, uh, shipping or an MIS, we can have that information. We can display that in a number of different ways. If there's approval and Morton has signed this job off, this turn on, I could actually have that information displayed there. And all of this can be exported into Excel, as I mentioned before. So some smaller printers can use this for e-invoicing. You can take the data off and you can create your own invoice. You can import it into your own accounts package, but it all integrates both ways into an MIS if we're allowed to do it. Some smaller MISs, we only do a single integration. The larger MIS systems, we do bi-directional information. And over the next year or two, that's only going to get better, more and more efficiency. So, you know, we don't have to be holding the price in here. We can be taking that from the MIS system. And in turn, those MISs are starting to link up to the paper merchants. So they're starting to, to work in a different way as well. So what I've done here is I've, I've covered off um, uh, B2B web to print. And I'm just going to move on uh, a little bit. One interesting factor is that approximately 70% of print at the moment is ordered online. That's how important web to print is. The UK is a 14 billion pound market. So you know, when you put this into context, web to print now is, is more than said in the introduction, it's a, it's a must have. So B2B is great. What if you don't want to work in the B2B market? What if you've already got a web to print system and you're quite happy with it? That's fine because we're always here when you need us. But what if you want to go into the B2C market? Now we've got a number of different ways to do this. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this, which is a, a, a WordPress website that has uh, WooCommerce linked into it. So why would you look at uh, WordPress? Well, WordPress is an affordable way to go into the market. So I believe uh, I believe something like 71% of, of e-commerce sites are, uh, are, are WordPress. There's 500 a day, though, seven days a week that are hitting the market. And WooCommerce is a way you can manage uh, a lot of the functionality uh, uh, within that. So what I can do here is I can go through and I can manage the product uh, that I want to review and, and, and go through. One of the things that we do is a little bit unique, we can actually manage VDP products. So as I scroll down here, and I just click on to the next page, click on here, what I could do is I could have wedding invites. Now, not a lot of people are getting married right now um, because we've got various lockdowns, but that just means there's a backlog of those uh, weddings and, and uh, birthdays and celebrations. And what I can do is I can create a, a pick, pick your date, save the date, sorry, uh, card, I can attach the data into it, and I can do that personalization en masse within a WordPress interface. It doesn't get any more affordable than that. It is a really low cost uh, entry into that market. If you want to go a little bit further forward, then what we can do is we can uh, also integrate uh, a software into uh, a, an API. So as I come down here, so this is the same company, it's a fictitious company. Uh, as I scroll down, I've got, I can see I've got some, some products here. The first product I'm going to look at uh, is this uh, embedded technology. Now, when I'm talking about embedded technology, I'm talking about putting a window on your customer's uh, website in order to drive their print goods using your technology uh, and come through. So I'm just going to click on that item there. And I'm going to open it up. It seems to have gone a little bit slow. Yeah. So try it now. I'm going to try it now again. So let me just do that again. Seems to be a, a connection thing going on. Got a lovely live demo. Clicking on here. There we go. So as I come through here, uh, it's a Stellar Artois poster. You can see there, and I've got the ability to personalize that. So this is on this designprintandsupply.com test website. This could actually be on any website. It could be on your client's website. It could be on uh, it could be on your customer's customer's website where you're adding that extra level of engagement. So what I can do here is I can personalize uh, this item. I'm opening up. I've now got a window that's appeared. So I've got a venue name. So let's just pop uh, Inkish in there. Let's pick a call to action. Let's just go for four bottles. Uh, as I scroll down, let's go for $9.99. Let's just put a price in there. Let's put euros just for change. As I scroll down there, you can see it's been updated. Um, 
let's pick a date picker. Let's have it from Friday and let's come down here and let's have it until the following weekend. Now, what's happened is I've, I'm creating a personalized item on someone else's website. So let me just uh, go back. If I change that to uh, Chalice with Cashew Nuts, open that up, and I've changed the call to action. It's a it's the same template, but what it is, it's been amended. Now, where this is, is this is obviously a drinks uh, organization that's doing this. Uh, where this is, is working really well is with some of the luxury brands because you can start personalizing more items. And the beauty about personalization, it gives you more uh, uh, more items coming back. So if I just close that, very conscious on time here. So I'm just going to uh, yes, go back. Please. I can see Morton popping up. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to do something uh, very quick now. So I'm, I'm figuring I've got about four minutes to still show you some, some items here. So I'm going to try something a, a, a little bit different. So I'm, Morton, I'm just going to stop sharing my screen. And if you could move your head a little bit to the left and smile. So, yeah. Okay, let me just, for some reason, web, it, it stopped doing that. So I take a picture of myself, and it doesn't get any more live than this. So I'm going to go, I'm now going to share my screen again, because Morton's picture disappeared. I've had to use a really bad one of myself. There's a reason why I disappeared, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was hoping to get you, and you were too quick. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm going to open up a, a, a very simple graphics package. Uh, it's called Microsoft Paint. Right, so I'm now looking in a real B to C environment, which you can see. Oh, well, so there's a T in the end of paint. Ah, I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> what I'm doing is you've got a chubby little fella there. So let me just save that again. There's nothing worse with using your own picture. I was hoping to catch Morton out, uh, but unfortunately I haven't. So let me just file, save as, and give that a name. You see paint, not respond. This is why people should use InDesign. I'm, I'm selling it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save that and just call that Inkish. Honestly, it really doesn't get any more live than this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into this product here, uh, Marvel. So one of the big winners in the in the web to print market has been uh, greetings cards. So let me just show you what we can do here. So if that's come up. Like I said, it doesn't get any more live than this. So is it uh, stressful, Kelvin, or is it fun? It's, you know what, it's, it's, when you've been doing this a long time, I think I've watched a few of the demos this week, and um, <laughs> you can go, tell. <laughs> things just go wrong. You've got to just embrace them. Uh, and I think, you know, you sit there and you, you become an expert on the small talk and, and, and so forth, and it's not going to load. But you know what, I'll put a video on this uh, afterwards because uh, uh, time is a time is a killer but Kelvin uh, to be honest the last time uh, uh, where where I didn't receive the videos that you planned I I actually believe that these uh, videos that you put up showing uh, with my not so pretty face that performed quite well for you didn't it yeah oh phenomenal yeah and, and this is the thing, <laughs> you know th this kind of content the, the, the stuff that you guys are doing uh, is is phenomenal. So I'm aware I'm aware that people will ask questions, and I, I'm I'm really looking forward to that. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip that. Apologies, everybody. I'm going to go straight into core production. This comes as part of the system. So is you uh, if you don't have an MIS, you don't have workflow, you don't have the ability to manage the jobs that are coming through. Don't worry, our software comes with this as standard. So you get your own job management board in order to to process that. So you know. Um, here, I can see the jobs that are coming through. I can manage my sub-supplier jobs that are going through. So I could I could be a, a, I, I could not be printing, and I could have five printers I'm using, and I can manage the jobs going backwards and forwards. It's disaster and recovery. It's it's imperative. And then just to sort of um, just to sort of finish that, I've got a, a little video playing in the mobile there of, of personalizing a T-shirt. It doesn't just have to be print. If anybody wants to get in contact with me, would like a better demo when the internet is, is, is more in my favour, please get in touch. I'm on LinkedIn, as people can tell. And the key thing, the one takeaway here is VPress's motto. We partner customers to success. So for us, it's not about selling a lot of, uh, getting a lot of money for our web to print. For us, it's about working with our customers longer term to make them more successful. And, you know, we've got over 5,000 brands, over 2,000 printers using our software. And, um, 
you know, we love doing what we're doing. So I think that's bang on the nail for 30 minutes. <laughs> well, uh, I am, as uh, usual, uh, quite astonished what you can uh, what you can uh, what you can do in a short time Kelvin so <laughs> it was a fantastic presentation so thank you very much um, I think in uh, to be uh, in respect to there's a lot of people commenting and the most of them are just appreciating I mean it's your, you have your usual suspect fans coming saying hey Kelvin you're the best and uh. <laughs> yeah you covered a lot a lot uh, uh, amazing yeah um, I don't know where to yeah. Did Come again? More than 10 what, is there more than 10 people who turned up? That's the important thing. No, it's not important, uh, but we have uh, 41 live attendees right now, and that is uh, that is as good as, as it gets with the uh, Inkish. I mean, you should have been on Drupal because then you could have 14,000 asking questions. That would be something, right? <laughs> 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 well, um, there is a lot of comments and things like I don't know how much we can get going because we have uh, we have to leave at some point. But let's say uh, there's a discussion about price, uh, and that, I think that goes down to the price where you and I started talking about the pricing, whether that was important or. Not. I like your approach of pricing, where you could pick the different things and then see things uh, transparently. So I get from that perspective, I totally agree with you that 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 pricing was, is important. Uh, also. Um, uh, a few of the comments like yeah with web to print everything becomes so transparent so you can pick and you know i have worked uh, with uh, also buying print from companies and and uh, yes i have tried buying at the cheapest rates and yes i have been disappointed so i think from that perspective uh, uh, web to print does not change that perspective it, it just you will still have to choose your suppliers with uh, uh, in that perspective um Dave Carter is writing, uh, being able to integrate with customer third-party systems is a real USP. I take that you cannot disagree with that one. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's one of the opportunities within the market. It's key. Yeah. yeah. And then we have, um, again, about pricing. I think we should uh, have a session about pricing, you and me, uh, Kelvin, at some point. <laughs> um, We're in a market where everything's on demand. You know, everybody... Everything is on demand now, so we've got to give customers a price. Now, so I think we have one here that is um, probably also about price when the day is over. But it's Sarah uh, from uh, Route One, uh, and you remember? Maybe you remember, but we did a wonderful film with her on Inkish uh, in in, the, in our last webinar. And she's writing, "Hi, Robert. As a VPress client, I can confirm we use VPress through an Arab." A Reaper link for uh, our uh, corporate clients before, so uh, I take that as a uh, as I mean you, you get the you get the, the the testimonials also in a live in environment, right? I mean, Good. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, and then Alistair Hall is is a video being made of this, so we can share with us. Yes, uh, all our webinars are. Uh, available shortly after as a register. You can register and see the replays immediately on Inkis News. And next week, uh, we will have them uh, edited mainly for for the intro and the starting thing. As, and then you can also like uh, fast forward in the films, and that will be available on Inkis TV from Monday. So yes, definitely. Good job, Mr. K from Shocks. That is uh, again. Um, and Paul Steed said that there was a forty-eight at the peak. So you can be proud of yourself, my friend. <laughs> Yes. There's another one I see here from, from Robert as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Kelvin, some printers have large corporate customers. Do you support punch outs into enterprise procurement systems such as Ariba, SAP, Oracle, and stuff? Yeah, absolutely. And that is, one, that is a huge opportunity for printers. So we do punch out or round trips, the XML. We do that as standard. And to be honest, I think that's one of the first things that we started doing. So we did it for Deloitte about 20 years ago. Hmm. Um, and we've done over 200 to 300 of those now. So, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Oracle, SAP, Ariba, all those kind of things. And uh, Neil Bridgeland is asking, where is the system developed? It's here in the UK. So what we've done is we've not offshored it anywhere uh, uh, in a faraway warm climate. We've decided to, to keep control of it. And what it means is it means more and more of our customers, like Sarah, will come to us with challenges from their customers and, and ask us to change and develop the actual software. So, and we can do that. And we've got a very strong development roadmap. We, our guys in development are, are, are awesome. Uh, last year, we changed the direction of where we were going because we saw that everybody just needed to get jobs into production. 
which we had to do a mindset change, which became a technology change, which now we're educating our customers that is available. You know, we, I can't express how it's important that is. And uh, while we at it, I have just shared uh, the video we did with Sarah because she also talks about uh, uh, what you just said about uh, how uh, agile you have been in helping and supporting them in their work. So I thought it, it was uh, is uh, good to sh share that film again. Um, There's an interesting uh, one here as well here from Paul Stead. Does ERP integration move web to print away from just print? I think it's just the opposite. Yeah, it strengthens the it's, it strengthens the argument, but the argument the argument about the technology. All, all the guys this week have been phenomenal. I mean, to, to come and do this, it's you know, it's not easy just to sit here and, and, and oh, yeah. talk. something always goes wrong. And they've all been they've all been fantastic. And and some of the guys' English is in their first language. I come from the north of England, and some of their English was better than mine. So, um, but yeah, web to print is evolving, and it's it's now it's now personalization. I think it's more personalization driven. Rather than getting something through the door that says, dear sir, dear madam, it's the content's got to be there. The name's got to be correct. You know, we're branding, we're branding things up like workwear, you know, different things. Backdrop was but uh, but I, I actually read that question in a bit different, Shaq, because uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, when Paul is asking and, and the EP integration move uh, V2P away from just print, I was actually thinking that uh, yesterday we saw a presentation where a company were selling hand sanitizers together with uh, face masks. And you can't say that that hand sanitation is, is exactly what you would normally buy from print, but the face masks are. So, I mean, so from that perspective, it might also extend with web to print that you can actually say that if you own the customer, you can sell anything the customer wants. Yeah, but that's non-printed goods then. No, no, that, that, but that is just, that That was when, I, when he said, uh, away from just print, so okay. that was why I thought so. Okay. So one of our customers is giving free hand sanitizer personalized with their logo on it, with other items as well. So you can you can turn that into a personalization campaign. Mm -hmm. So, well, um, uh, yeah, I'm again, off to the other session. Uh, so, Kelvin, yeah. sorry, great no, to meet you. Thank you very much. Thank meet you. you next time. Thanks, Thanks again. And uh, just here on the last minute, and our Shaq left us. Um, Kelvin, uh, you are a very skilled uh, demonstrator. So, uh, how much is uh, fake and how much is real? <laughs> you know what it is? It's um, I, I could tell which which were real and which were fake this week. Uh, all, that, all that was real. It's only when something goes wrong in a demo you know it's real. And yeah, you know, this is this is a challenge. Yeah, you, you 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 know me. I always try to come up with the bad jokes and. <laughs> I find that. <laughs> um, I just want to say, uh, I think that uh, after I got to know uh, VPress uh, and also some of your former employees, I think that uh, I have uh, really uh, enjoyed getting to know you, Kelvin. And I think that uh, that uh, when you when you do presentations like this, it just uh, underscore why you have as a company and you as a person have the role in the industry as you have. So I want to thank you very much for, for taking your time to participate in our Learn With Us um, um, a web to print session here. Uh, and uh, I think, to be honest, I think it's just wonderful to have the opportunity to see comp uh, websites and web uh, solutions like this uh, uh, side by side. I think it's wonderful. So I just want to say thank you very much. Can I just say one thing? So thanks very much. This has been awesome. I, I've really enjoyed it. This has been, for me, a geek in web to print. I, I love doing it. And can I just say the pub's on today, the Crown Pub on LinkedIn, 3.30. We're talking about web to print. Everybody's welcome. Even even if you sell different web to prints, it's not as good as ours. That's fine as well. Come and join it. It's open to everyone. What, what about the few ones that you sell something that is better than yours? Are they welcome too? Well, if you find one, do it. Bring them. Get them. I'm more than happy. More than happy. <laughs> Just kidding. Well, everybody, thank you very, very much for a wonderful session. I have shared a link. Uh, the next session we have is with Kirk Lewis from HP in Canada, and he is going to talk about SiteFlow as a something, a piece of software that tie a lot of the things together, which we've been talking about the past day. So I hope you will enjoy. We have two sessions left of this uh, webinar here. So uh, please join us at the next session. The link is in uh, in the chat. So. Uh, See you, Kelvin. See you, audience. And thank you very much. Take care.